Hello there, folks. Welcome to this installment of uh, Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. Um, I'm sure you've noticed there's no uh, fancy introductions and fancy graphics and moving video all over the place. Um, just audio and a splash screen. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the reason for that is right now, you know, I'm really more focused for this on, well, a topic of conversation more than fancy cosmetics. Because there's something that I would like to do my best to add clarity to. One of the more, well, confusing 2012 topics, really. Confusing for a lot of people anyway. Because truth being colored by perspective, there's, you know, so many people with so many different perspectives and ways of expressing it, you know, for, for, for any given topic, that, you know, if you take all of this information from a point of view that's authoritative, and not so much from an abstract, artistic, individualized um, point of view, because we all, you know, express ourselves differently as individuals, then even though it's really the same one topic or same one thing expressed just in, in many different ways, and, you know, in essence, they don't truly contradict or conflict, the if you are taking things too literally and taking things out of context um, this generates um, what seems to be so many contradictions and paradoxes and and confusion and you know people are just banging their heads into the wall going you know what the hell am I supposed to believe who's who's right who's wrong who's got the facts who doesn't so then, you know, you've got all this, like, debunking going on, and, and people locking into certain things, like, oh, I'm going to debunk this, and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And really, when you look at anything in a modality of contest of ego, it won't really matter how much research you do or how much you look into anything, because when your goal is to prove or disprove something, then... You're always going to be a cat chasing your tail, essentially. But if your goal is just the acquisition of knowledge and, and information, with the desire to just make up your own damn mind on things, then you're going to have a much easier time. So, you know, what I'm about to discuss, don't see any of this as authoritative or absolute claims on anything or whatever. Um... This is just my perspective, what I'm, what I'm about to say. And you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. I mean, whatever. It's all good, you know. Take what resonates and pitch the rest in the frickin' garbage can. I mean, you know, you've got the right to do that. So, um, let's get into it then, especially seeing as you're probably sitting there well, like, come on, what is this elusive 2012 topic that you're gonna start talking about it. Friggin' start talking about it already, Dave. Come on, you long-winded bastard. Okay, fine, fine. All right. <laughs> There's a concept that has become popularized these days. Um, the idea of creating one's own reality. That thought create, re creates reality. And you've got all different views on this. And unfortunately, most of those views are pumped so full of mainstream hype, so full of dogma, so full of ego, that it's completely understandable that, though a lot of things might seem to make a little bit of sense, and you might have a sense of hopefulness about it, it still sounds like absolute horseshit. <laughs> to most people from the way it's pitched. And, you know, 
I, I just want to want to lay down the straight talk science of this stuff and, you know, kind of delete the dogma, as it were, the best I can from, from my perspective and give you an idea of, I'm not going to say, oh, well, well, this is the way this is. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to say is this is the points that are attempting to be relayed, but usually there's an epic failure in, you know, the relaying of them, um, especially when it comes to the more materialistic views of it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what makes me want to vomit more, the dogmatic religious ideas of it that, you know, have people forming codependence and delusional wishful thinking or you know the people who start treating the universe like the quantum version of the home shopping network oh my god both groups just ugh, give me a freaking break so I just want to to the best of my ability the best of my perspective just kind of lay down the logic of it um but not in such a way that it's going to go over your head. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be using, you know, just science, pretty much. Science and some common freaking sense here. But I'm not going to go into the science so much to where you're going to be like, Oh my god, Dave, come on, speak fucking English or shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep things as, you know straightforward and, you know, average human, uh, relation as possible. Okay. So, the first thing to understand within all this is, um, basically what the heck matter is made of. I mean, you know, everything's made of matter. I mean, you know, we're taught this in, like, what, third grade, fourth grade? But, you know, what, what is this, uh, this matter stuff? Uh, you know, what the hell is it anyway? Well, matter is made <coughs> of 1% energy. I mean, we all know what energy is. And 99% empty space. Which science has realized, oh shit, the empty space is energy too. So, Everything is made up of 100% of energy. Well, energy is light, and light is not physical, is it? Of course not. So, what has actually been proven scientifically, and, you know, do your own homework on this. I'm not going to get all into all the different experiments that have done and blah, blah, blah you know, hit up YouTube or whatever, do some Googling, do your own homework. I'm not going to go into all that. But the point is, is that physical reality is, it's been proven to be a holographic illusion. Now, illusion doesn't mean fake. Of course this reality is real. You know, bitch slap yourself in the face, it's going to hurt. Of course it's real. Um, illusion just means that we are not clear on the true nature of something. Like, when a magician makes something disappear on stage, are they really making it disappear? Of course. The question is, how? The magician leaves you to make assumptions about that. Are they really using magic? Or are they using a series of mirrors and trapdoors? You know, whatever. And, you know, or are they using some sort of high technology or blah, blah, blah. Well, the most objective possible answer to that is it could be anything, who knows? Who knows? And and does it really matter? You know, you you, you paid your, you know, overinflated, you know, 75 bucks or whatever it is to get in the door to be entertained. And so, you know, it's like what does that matter anyway? No pun intended with matter, but but anyway, you get the point so far, hopefully. So, <coughs> If it's making sense to you that this seemingly physical matter that is actually non-physical, that's made of light, that's holographic, if it's making sense to you as to how that's working, your next line of thought is logically going to be, 
Well, then how and why does everything seem physical? Because quite obviously, you can take a hammer and, you know, smash a desk and smash a chair or, you know, bash your leg or whatever. You're going to have very physical things happening. So why would a non-physical reality seem physical then? Well, for any of you who have watched the Matrix movies, you know, Neo was like, you know, it all this seems real. And Morpheus said, well, what's real? If real is what you can see and hear and taste and touch and feel, then real is nothing more than electrical impulses being translated by your brain. Bingo. Exactly. That is exactly it. So that is exactly how and why a non-physical reality can seem very physical. Because if we look at the Matrix movies, now I'm not saying we have bodies tucked in a freaking machine bin somewhere and that, you know, the movie is, is literal. Of course it's not literal. It's a metaphor. It's making some points. But it does perfectly explain scientifically as to how a non-physical world can be translated as, as physical to us. Because it's all electrical impulses, electrical light energy. Yeah, we're flowing with that. It's all electrical impulses being translated by the brain. So, you know, that makes perfect frickin' sense right there. So the next thing that you're gonna want to understand about this, okay, you look at light, the light spectrum, energy, what is all that? <clears throat> it's vibratory frequency, right? Well, usually measured in hertz, but we measure all sorts of crap and all sorts of different whatever, but it's, it's vibratory frequency. And the most common um, uses of vibratory frequency, for example, are TV, radio, and wireless internet transmission. So you've got, you know, all these frickin' invisible signals all coexisting at once, flying around everywhere. Um, television, radio, internet, you can't see it. You can't see it at all. But it's all coexisting at once. And if you, you know, take your wireless laptop, you know, your Wi-Fi connection, and you, you know, scan for the wireless router signal or whatever it is you're tapping into and you connect to it, then you're pulling the Internet in through your computer. Well, what are you doing with your computer? You're, you're looking at the screen which is light, this is being interpreted by your brain. And you're using a keyboard and mouse, which again, just do what? It's creating electrical impulses, electrical frequencies, that through wires or not, depending on whether or not you have like one of them wireless USB keyboard mouse things, or you know, whether it's the traditional wired plug-in. It's all just electrical signals going through that wire, and of course it is. And then the computer is translating those electrical signals. And obviously the appropriate end results are happening on the screen. And then of course with like TV and radio examples. You can only tune in to the radio station that you currently have the radio dial or TV channel tuned to. So if you're tuned to like, you know, 101.9 FM, then you're not tuned to 93.5. If you want to be tuned to 93.5, you have to move your, you know, digital dial to there, hit the tracking button, whatever, and go to there. But then once you're there, you're not listening to the radio station that you were listening to before, right? Of course. So, that's the idea that frequency attracts itself to itself 
aligns itself with itself. You need that alignment. The radio dial must be tuned to, aligned with, a certain frequency. And then that frequency is going to get you that station, that radio station that you're looking for. So if you know that there's a rock and roll station on, you know, 103.5 or whatever, and you have that information, you know that that's there, and you're in the mood for that, you know, rock music, then you're going to tune the dial to, you know, 103.5, and then there it'll be. So the action of tuning that radio dial to a frequency has now brought you audio content that you were looking for because you had an awareness that that content could be accessed on that frequency. So it's all just alignment of frequency, period. Well, if everything is energy and everything is frequency and everything is light, and by the way, um, radio and uh, internet and TV transmissions, they are all literally light, just, just to let you know. It's just there's there's only a tiny portion called the visual light spectrum that our eyes can actually see. So yes, that means even sound is light, just being being translated um, through a different uh, organ of the body, as it were, and still processed by the brain. So okay, now the whole frequency thing is is making a bit more sense to you, hopefully. One would imagine using common frame of reference examples here. So. That being the case, if everything and everyone is energy and is frequency based, then that means whatever frequency you are resonating at, those are the type of people, places, circumstances, etc. that you are going to draw to you because everything has a frequency. It works just like the radio, in that sense. So, the people, you know, who are thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, if I get really good at it, you know, and I'm visualizing this, th th this bag of money that, you know, one day this bag of money should just appear, this new car, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, please, these people have been watching too much freaking you know, mainstream TV, like, you know, Peter Pan, or I Dream of Genie, or what the hell ever, you know. Yeah, and these people need to get a freaking clue. Visualization is only to assist you in lining up your frequency. Because the main thing that allows you to control your frequency, and to know what frequency you're even on, is emotion. Emotions also tell you what you're thinking. But society has trained us to base what we're thinking on what we're feeling, while we're feeling based on what we're thinking, and well, it kind of, you know, goes into this negative spiral loop of stupidity, and then we wonder why we're all so goddamn confused, right? Um, <laughs> Like, we're all like cats chasing our tails, I swear to God. Is it any surprise that society and the world and all this is, is structured as nonsensically and, and stupidly as it is? I mean, really, if you really look at it. So, you know, understanding that, understanding that emotions are frequencies, and that whatever emotion that you're feeling, that, that you're resonating, that frequency, is going to align you with the um, reality that you're looking for? Well, yes and no. It is and isn't that simple. There's some other finer points to, to get to, but some people stop there. And it would be like the same thing as if a little kid said, 
oh, well, I know that the car has four wheels and a brake pedal and a gas pedal and a steering wheel. So all I need to do is get in the, get in the car and hit the gas and hit, hit the brake and, and use the steering and, and I should be able to drive on the roads no problem, just fine, right? <laughs> you let a little kid do that, you're gonna let them get themselves frickin' killed. And, uh, you know, the reasons to, to all of us are obvious as to why you don't let a little kid drive a freaking car. So, similarly, there's a bit more to understand about how all this frequency shit works. And, really, psychology, understanding a, a little bit of basic psychology, that's like the the inner workings of controlling frequency. We call it um, core belief systems, worldview paradigms, fancy ass words like that, right? But really like psychology is the, um, you know, the, 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 the control panel, the, the driving dashboard of emotionality. I mean, you ever notice that imbalanced and dysfunctional psychological states lead to imbalanced and dysfunctional emotionals, uh, just chaotic thinking and everything all over the place, and just living freaking nightmare. And even if you put these people on, on medication, on chemical freaking denial, you know, still, I mean, there are exceptions to the rule, I grant you that, but let's, let's look at the, the major rule here. Most of these people, how are they, how are they doing? You know, if you look at most of these people, okay, they're on the meds, they're, maybe they're calmer now. Maybe they're more at peace, but are they still attracting dramas into their lives? Yeah, most, I would imagine. Are they still attracting dramatic people? Are they still experiencing confusion and what you might consider to be bad luck? Um, are they still experiencing um, financial crises and, you know, blah, blah, blah? Well, of course. Of course they are. So, if controlling frequency was just as simple as frickin' complacency and happiness, we'd live in a freaking utopia, and we don't. Why? Because it's not that flippin' simple. It's, it's just not. Now, when I say it's not that flippin' simple, I do not mean that it is oh so impossibly difficult to understand. It's all easy to understand, given enough time and going at your own pace and allowing yourself to learn about it. Just like, you know, um, you, you made it from kindergarten to, to eighth grade. It's not like, oh, woe is me. Um, whatever shall I do? I will never get through kindergarten, much less to eighth grade. There's just too much. Oh, woe is me. It's doomed. All, all is lost. I may as well give up now and not even bother. No. Just because things are a process doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to be phenomenally impossible to learn. Or it's going to, you know, require you to be some sort of freaking rocket scientist or or whatever. No, no, no. That is bullshit. And in this dysfunctional world, all we get spewed at us, left, right, and all over the place, is crap. Because society's just full of shit, but society's what's running things. The mainstream media, um, the news, the educational system, so on and so forth. I mean, look at how we're taught. We're taught that struggle is success. Gee, put resistance on your own efforts. And and that's going to lead to success and prosperity? Really? That's like saying that in order to go really, really fast in your car, you have to slam the brake pedal. Just keep slamming the brakes. And if you remain in place while you're slamming the brakes, well, oh, that must mean there's something wrong with you and you're just a fucking failure, aren't you? Oh, shame on you, you weakling. And it's like, what fucking a sick mentality is that oh gee responsibility is taking on increasing burden and stress really 
I thought response ability was your ability to freaking respond rather than to react. I mean, if you want to get control of something and have, you know, <laughs> and and have this, you know, just this controlled happy life, you know, to where things are productive, you know, are is going into a a crazy freaking panic stricken nonsensical rage and getting all pissed off and flying up off the handle and you know punching walls and and getting into into fights with people and getting drunk and doing crack and whatever i mean you know is all that going to get you where you're going well of course not you know so what's what's going to get you to where you're going well um a clear and rational mind an objective mind that can see things objectively, that can see things as they are, that's that's clear, that's not not clouded, you know, no constipation of the brain clogging things up, you know, <laughs> gotta do the paradigm shitting here. Um, so, obviously, you know, it's just like no one would expect a, a drunkard, a drunken person, someone pissed drunk off their ass just guzzled down a couple of freaking 40 answers. No one would expect someone like that to be able to be capable of much of anything until they've slept off the alcohol, right? So, if you're taking on burden and stress and more burden and more stress and pushing yourself beyond your breaking point to where you're about to go absolutely goddamn insane... That's not clear-minded. That's a similar state as as a, as a drunkenness. It's a lack of clarity. And you're not going to get anything accomplished. But society says, oh yeah, take on burden, take on struggle, take on strife, and you'll be successful. And Well, if you don't su succeed in that environment, well, it's obviously your fault. You're doing something wrong. You need to go to college, or you need to go to college again. Or, um, you, you need to stop doing this, or start doing that, or, you know, insert 10 billion excuses here, but either way, they'll, society wants to point the finger at you. Oh well, you must be fucking up, you horrible person, you goddamn weakling, you idiot. Uh, your fault. Yeah, right. You know, it's like, the requirements of society, like, require you to be completely non-human, like some frickin', you know, um, non-biological, stronger than, than metal, able to leap tall buildings in a single frickin' bound. I mean, what the hell? This society is freaking delusional. Then, we're taught, oh, well, you know, you have to tell the truth, you know, because when you tell the truth, you get you get rewarded and good things happen. But, oh, if you tell a lie, oh, evil criminals lie, bad, nasty people, they, they end up getting into trouble, going to jail, whatever. And, you know, from a basic point of morality, this seems to make sense, right? And then you try to practically apply it. So, we start off telling the truth with everything. And it gets us into no end of shit. And then we start realizing, oh, well, when we lie, we are avoiding trouble in unless we get caught. Now, these two ideas are a duality. No matter which one you go with, you're going to be a cat chasing your tail. Because if you're always lying, then you're still going to get yourself in deep shit inevitably. You might delay it a bit. But you're going to start, not, you know, you become what you do, right? So it's like, if you get into this big, huge habit of lying about everything to everyone, you're going to start lying to yourself about everything. You're going to be a master of making yourself completely freaking delusional. So you're not going to be able to see much of anything or face much of anything. Oh, you don't like the fact, you, you, you don't like that, that, you know, if you go over and do this, this, and that, that, that it's going to give you big trouble, and it's and it might be better to go over there and do this other thing? Oh, well, if you don't like that, just, you know, brainwash yourself and lie to yourself into, into thinking that everything's going to be cool. And then go over there and do that. And then when shit and fan happens, oh, well, now you've already got this list of everyone else you can blame. 
So lying don't get you nowhere. But at the same time, you know, volunteering every piece of information to everyone about everything in all circumstances gets you in trouble too. Like, um, you know, for example, telling the truth to a crooked cop will probably, like, land you in frickin' jail. Like, even if you're completely innocent of anything. Because a crooked cop is looking to screw over and exploit absolutely everybody they can. Well, they wouldn't be a crooked cop otherwise, right? So, the main problem is, is that we're taught this absolutist, ridiculous thinking. Oh, there's only one universal answer for anything. And, and if this over here is right, then nothing else can be right. Just this one thing. You know, it's like saying there can only be one flavor of ice cream. And it is so stupidly frickin' ridiculous. So now, what does all this have to do with frequency? Well, as you know, energy has to be in balance in order to work properly. I mean, like, God help you if the energy in your house, you know, coming into your house, wasn't in balance and was always constantly fluctuating. You'd never know it when you, when you plug your device in, you know, if there's not going to be enough power to power your device or if like it's going to be so much energy surging in that it's going to start snap crackle pop and blowing up and bursting into flames right energy needs to be freaking balanced um and it can't be dysfunctional so this is why psychology is the control panel to emotionality and emotionality is how you know what frequency you're at, and it's also how you shift frequency. So now that you understand the basic points, um, let's get into what's referred to as core belief systems or worldview paradigms, because the act of shifting your frequency, our first impulse is to think, Oh, well, I don't like that over there. So, I'm going to act in this other direction that I like better. And then, that'll shift my frequency and change my circumstances. And that's completely incorrect because what that'll actually do is draw you even more to that other thing that you were looking to avoid. Because whatever your focus is on, is whatever your frequency is. And by focus, I don't mean like staring at someone like a stalker, like focus, uninterrupted focus. That's not what I mean. I mean focus as in like what your belief systems are that, you know, are absolutely the most real to you. Like you, you don't doubt that there's a... Uh, uh, a star in the center of our solar system that, that we call the sun and um, you know you don't doubt that you that you have five fingers on each hand and you know there there's a lot of things that you have faith in and if you have faith in things like the rich get richer the poor get poorer um, I, I can't trust myself um, I, I, I can never have any friends because I can only have just associates and whatever because, you know, people are just out to screw each other over and, oh, I can't trust myself and I, I don't know who to trust and, you know, just you just gotta, gotta really keep watch on everybody, man, because everybody's just out to freaking get you. Um, or that, oh man, if, if I didn't have bad luck, I, you know, I just wouldn't have any luck at all. And oh, why does that always happen to me? Oh, damn it. You know, oh, and, you know, everybody else always gets the promotion. I never get the promotion. What the hell? All these illusions of lack, difficulty, struggle, etc., etc. We've been brainwashed with the propaganda that the most difficult possible realities are the most real. To the point that we think that 
anything being even remotely, slightly easy is ridiculous. In the best case, we laugh at the idea. In the worst case, we have our intelligence insulted. Like, what, you think I'm stupid enough to believe that? You're telling me that bullshit? You really think I'm that gullible? You really think I'm that naive? Come on. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. God, I'm not stupid, you jerk. You're trying to pull one over on me. Yeah, fuck you. So we get all, like, defensive. Because we, ha we also have an addiction to the need to be right. <laughs> That's another trap. So... This, this logic that everything, or lack of logic, that everything needs to be difficult, except no substitutes, there's no other real reality. That's like saying that you can only have multiplication, division, you can't have addition and subtraction. And so that's why our economy is based on division and subtraction, our, our religions, everything we believe about every aspect in life is based on just everything always being taken away, never having enough, um, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's out to get you. It's, it's as stupid as, as insisting that 2 plus 2 equals 1, or 10 times 30 equals 5. It's like saying, oh yeah, addition and multiplication... You expect me to believe those exist? Well, fuck you, man. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. You can't trick me. Only division and subtraction exist. You know, you, you're not gonna gonna con me into thinking addition and, and multiplication exist, buddy. You know, screw you. Yeah, I wasn't born yesterday. I'm not stupid, you know. You jerk. So that is what we what we do to ourselves. And, Another analogy I like to use is, imagine you're standing in front of a tree with a blindfold on, and you're trying to calculate the probability of the existence of the tree, and what that tree might be, based only on what you assume you know about trees. And you're just standing there struggling with it. And someone walks up to you and says, you know, why don't you just take off the blindfold and just look at the tree directly. And imagine yourself saying, take off the blindfold and look at the tree directly? What? That would be too easy. You're crazy. Nothing is that easy. Wow, do you think I'm stupid? You think I'm stupid enough to believe it's really that easy? My God. Either either you think I'm stupid or, or, or you're just nuts. You're crazy. Insane. You need to get help, go on medication. Man, guy, guy thought I could just take off the blindfold and just look at the tree directly. Yeah, right. Ah, yeah, gullible, naive son of a bitch thinking life's that easy. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that is the way that we're brought up to view the freaking world. That's why we're taught things like, um, Intuition doesn't exist, and um, imagination is, is is childish, and playfulness is rude and stupid. And asking questions is a is a is a disruption. Oh, how dare you! You need to fall in line, Mister. Who are you to be condescending and and ask if there's a different way of doing it? Or oh yeah, you you should be ashamed of yourself. This is the way we're brought up, folks. And it's absolutely flippin' ridiculous. So, with that said, we use that thinking when we first start coming into realization about the whole frequency-based universe thing, or multiverse, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, well, I don't like that over there, so I'm going to go in this other direction that I do like. And then frequency will align me with that. No, it won't, because look where your focus is. Your focus is only 
on escaping that which you don't like. So you're adding resistance. You're judging, attaching, aligning yourself with the radio station of I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. You're aligning yourself with the radio station that plays only the music that you absolutely hate. So then you're aligning with that while simultaneously trying to go into a better direction. Tricking yourself as we all at first do. That, oh yeah, I'm going in this better direction. So, you know, that, that that's a frequency I'm going to align with. And all hell breaks loose. All just nightmare. Chaos. And then either we're thinking, oh, well, this shit doesn't work, or... Man, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't ever do anything right. What, what the fuck? And But that's a focus of frequency, too. So now you're aligning with these realities, you know, frequencies of not doing anything right. What the fuck? And, you know, I call this the quantum mirror. And, and what we like to do is we look into the mirror and go, Okay, mirror reflection. I'll smile, but only if you smile first. You know, the mirror cannot wait indefinitely. Or like tugging at the movie screen to change the movie and, and instead of going to the projector and changing the we, the reel in the projector. Or um, combing the mirror. <laughs> you want to comb your hair, so instead you comb the mirror and then you get all pissed off that your hair ain't changing. You gotta comb your hair, not the mirror. So... If the mirror is what's in your focus, your your that that image that you're seeing in the mirror that you want to change, but you're ch you're trying to change it by directing your energy at that which you want to change, your focus, your energy, your attention, whatever word you want to use. You're directing it at that which you know you're not wanting to align with. Well, well you're aligning with it. And you're not aligning with what you want to align with. I, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's real simple. It's like the equivalent of, of, you know, punching the shit out of yourself in the leg and it's hurting and you're punching yourself harder and harder and, and, and saying to yourself, okay, I, 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 I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, well still you're continuing to, to punch yourself in the leg and going, Oh my god, I keep doing this to myself, and why? It doesn't even dawn on you for a second that the way to not do it to yourself is to stop doing it. Stop freaking punching yourself in the leg, and then you'll no longer be punching yourself in the leg. Because your focus won't be on punching yourself in the leg. Your focus will be on not punching yourself in the leg. I mean... Is this making sense, or maybe it's too intelligent to be practical? I don't know. And again, there's lots of other research, you know, you can do online, tons and tons and tons of scientific studies and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just wanting to put it to you in the, the very simple, straightforward way. But now that when Bible verse, uh, judge not lest ye be judged, makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because when you're judging the shit out of somebody, what you're really saying is that, well, I'm not going to respect my own right to have my opinions independent of your right to have your own opinions and everything's all good. I'm going to try to force my view on you. I'm going to try to change you. Like, wow, that guy's being a real asshole. He needs to stop being an asshole or she or whoever no really they don't but you know in that situation we keep wanting to force them to change force them to stop force them to change who they are so we keep aligning with them time and time again because where's our focus they need to change they need to change they need to change they need to change so our focus is on them so we keep aligning with them and aligning with the fact where our focus is on they're not changing, they're not changing, they're still an asshole, they're still an asshole, they're still an asshole. So we keep experiencing 
than being an asshole. But, ironically, if you shift your view and go, well, hey, you know what's cool that they're an asshole, no problem. You know, they can they can be who they want to be. That's their problem, not mine. And I prefer not to be around assholes, so I'm just not going to deal with that. And in not judging them, and in giving them the right to be who they are, and also giving yourself the right to be who you are, and think and feel what you want to, instead of all these societal pressures of should and shouldn't, assholes or bullies or what have you they dominate other people through intimidation tactics don't they well if you're not able to be intimidated then you're no fun for the asshole anymore you don't have what they need because the only reason they were approaching you anyway is because you have what they need you know you you, you were being intimidated um, you were getting sad, you were getting pissed off, you were feeling victimized. You know, assholes get off on that shit, it's like freaking porn to them, man. It's like, oh yeah, they're being intimidated, oh, yes! It's like freaking porn to them, man. So it's like, if you give a porn addict porn, they're gonna keep like coming to you for more porn. Oh, you've always got the porn, man, yeah, give me more freaking porn, man! But if you're no longer intimidated, you, you can laugh at them. And, and humiliate them by default of respecting their right to be who they are. So then you're not taking anything they're saying to offense. You're not judging them at all. Which allows you to be jovial and you're joking around and teasing and just laughing and so on and so forth. So as far as frequency is concerned, you're putting them at a choice. Match or drop. They're getting a different reflection from you at that point, in their mirror. They're getting a reflection of positivity. So now they have a choice. They, they can either raise their frequency and explore this strange new idea of positivity. Oh, I'm so curious. What's this? It's so foreign to me. Or they can drop. They can frequency drop. Which means they have to exit your reality, get the hell away from you. Because now they're going to be like, oh man, that, that son of a bitch is so annoying. Like, like, like nails on a chalkboard. Oh my my god, that they're not giving me what I want. It's so, oh they're, oh, they're insufferable. Get them away from me. They suck. But another way that we suck those people into our lives we want them to approve of us oh my god we have this law set up in our realities from the brainwashing that we're subjected to that everyone has to approve of us so we get all fucking butthurt when someone doesn't approve of us so then we gotta force our will on them to try to make them approve of us and then when we can't we feel bullied and victimized oh our own freaking hypocrisy <laughs> so we too are just as big a, 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 of addicts as, as the bullies are level playing field kind of diffuses the blame game doesn't it because if everyone is an equal required component fuel for the proverbial fire so to speak then everyone is compatible. Everyone who participates in a drama has some sort of compatibility, frequency compatibility, based on their core beliefs. Otherwise, they wouldn't even be in the frequency situation. And this is where the idea of Murphy's Law comes from. I'm sure most of you have heard of Murphy's Law. It states that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Well, guess what? That's a core belief system. That's a worldview paradigm. And if you have 100% faith in that, oh, absolutely. That'll be your reality. You know the old saying about magic? It only works if you believe it. 
Well, that's just frequency alignment. That's not magic. It's more like whatever you align to, you will experience on a frequency level. Just like whatever radio station you align your radio tuner to, you will hear. And if it's really crappy, horrible music and you're under the impression that you can't align to any other radio station and that you have to stay parked on there forever and ever and ever in a torturous hell of crappy fucking music, insufferably shitty music, well, that's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Because, I mean, everybody knows that there's lots of other stations to choose from. Why not just switch to a different one? Oh, but that idea applies to absolutely everything. But we've been taught there's only one station of our, our seemingly physical reality, haven't we? So if we have a core belief system in that, and we've been taught that, and we firmly believe that, for as long as we're not willing to change our belief system, does it really honestly matter? Change you, you can't change me. We can make each other curious by being that example that contradicts other people's um, states of being, belief systems. Yeah, that's why people like um, Jesus said, you know, love thy neighbor as, as thyself. That doesn't mean, oh, come here, give me a hug, motherfucker. Oh, here's a Valentine's Day card. No, 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 no. No, it just means respect someone else's right to be who they are and not cast judgment. So that if you're of that frequency, then more and more you will attract two people who do the same. So that doesn't mean you'll never experience assholes. It just means you might experience a whole new level of assholes. The ones that actually respect your right to be you. That, you know, maybe they just come up to you like, you know, I think you're fucking stupid, you idiot. God, I've never seen anyone more stupid than you. And if you can laugh and just say, well, you, well, uh, you, you, you know how, how us idiots are if you didn't, you didn't have us, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to be entertained. And then the asshole might just laugh and be like, you know, I like you. But then because they can't really intimidate you, they're still not getting what they want, so they have to look elsewhere for it. So they exit your reality, but they didn't do it in this dramatically chaotic, nuclearly frickin' detonating sort of way. And also, when people start realizing this whole idea about frequency-based reality, they are so focused on how much they think their current life sucks ass that they want to have something totally oppositely different, like, right now. And they get all stressed out and pissed off. It's like expecting a frickin' tree seed to grow 40 feet in a day. Or, or if you, uh, you can imagine a ship in the Atlantic Ocean, and instead of going through the locks of the Panama Canal, expecting the ship to just jump out of the water for no apparent reason and just fly clear over the frickin' landmass and just splash down into the Pacific Ocean. I mean, that would just be absolutely freaking lutely ridiculous. I mean, who would expect that? Well, all of us really in a different context. Because we're all in such an impatient hurry that we want such polar opposite from, from where we are. And we want it so fast because we're sick of where we are. We don't realize that not only is that sort of instant quantum leap impossible, but if it were possible, it would probably kill us because it's such such an opposite extreme coming at us so fast. Our brains are freaking short circuit, man. I mean, we go clinically insane. I mean, honestly, it'd, it'd be like, um, you know, like like 95 degree day and like being being pushed into like a, a 60 degree freaking pool or something, you know, or or. or you know, being on board a, a nice, warm, cozy ship sailing the frickin' Arctic Circle and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, someone pushes you overboard. You know, hypothermia is going to set in real frickin' quick there, right? So, 
you can't have greater change at once than, than, than you can handle. Otherwise, if you can manage to accomplish something like that, there's really nasty consequences. Really freaking nasty, so... People think they want that quick of a change, and oh, believe me, you don't. It's, it's unbearable pressure. Absolute unbearable pressure. What you're looking for is just ease and flow, you know. You're, you're wanting to see that you're moving forward in a better direction. You want to be able to, to track your progress so you can look at it and go, ah, okay, cool, cool, yeah, things are getting better, cool, all right, all right, they're getting better, they're getting better. But you, you know, too sudden a change, too much, too fast. There'd be no time for you to learn how to adapt to the change, and you would go apeshit crazy. It wouldn't be comfortable at all. It'd be too much, too fast. Yeah! <laughs> Go freaking nuts, man. So, if you understand so far how these core belief systems determine our frequency, then you're getting the idea that it's all a matter of unlearning and relearning, and thinking for yourself, and doing it at your own pace. And... It's really a mission of self-exploration and self-discovery to kind of, you know, face all of your demons, but not at a rate that you can't handle. This scary, scary demon facing Freddy Krueger. Um, this isn't the mountain lion that wants to eat you. You know, at, this is more like busting illusions, you know, seeing that the snake wasn't really the snake, it was a water hose and maybe you just kind of overreacted a little. You know, that kind of realization, that kind of facing of things, not, you know, being chased by Freddy Krueger who wants to frickin' gut your stomach and rip out all your internal organs just for a sick and sadistic pleasure. No. <laughs> not that kind of facing. Because, let's face it, folks, and we, our heads have been filled with so much bullshit, it's not even funny. So it really is about a process of unlearning and relearning. And the more we clear out the garbage that's been put inside of our heads that doesn't belong to us, our vision starts to clear, so to speak. Our brains are less and less constipated, and now we can make more sober decisions. And with each of those new sober decisions, realization after realization, epiphany after epiphany, we start to change our core belief systems. Now it becomes more real to us that continuous improvements into our lives is the more real reality than continuous monotonous hell. And we start having these core belief systems at stake, you know? I don't have to add this resistance. I don't have to compartmentalize. I don't, I don't have to think, oh, well, this has to come only in this and this and this way, and, and through this time and this person, and blah, blah, fucking blah, and if it doesn't come that way, then damn it, it's just impossible. You know, kind of like how some people think, oh, the only way I could have millions and millions of dollars is if I win the lottery. That's the only way. Well, no, it's not. You, you could just, you know, start a business. And eventually, that business becomes successful enough to make that, that amount of money anyway. But then the first thing people are, well, well, how do I do that? Oh, and, and now they're all of a sudden going into all this worry, focusing on what they don't want, what they think they, they, they can't have, and blah, 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 blah. You know, the first step to learning how to be freaking successful is to just, like, drop all that and, you know... Focus on what you like, what you enjoy. I don't mean complacency. I don't mean naivety. I mean entrepreneurial. I mean self-sufficient, independent. You know, self-employed. That's what I'm talking about. Innovation, efficiency, productivity. You can't have that without fun. You gotta enjoy what you're doing, otherwise you are going to suck hard at it. And you know it. Try doing something you hate. And try doing it for a long time. 
for most things, you're probably going to suck at it. And even if you get good at it as just an adaptation skill, you won't be able to do it for too long at once before it starts really getting on your nerves. And then you're going to have to stop doing it and take breaks and take breaks and take breaks. And that's going to severely limit your productivity. Because there's too much resistance. You know, slamming on the brakes, so to speak. Yeah, see, taking breaks, slamming on the brakes. I mean, look at our English terminology. I mean, God, we call it taking a break. We're literally halting our productivity. Well, we wouldn't feel the need to take a break if what we were doing was fun to us in the first place. We don't need to take a break to, like, pee or, you know, whatever. You know, go grab another cup of pop or coffee or water or juice or, you know, whatever. But we wouldn't feel the need to take a break otherwise, because if we're really enjoying what we're doing, you know, the time is just flying by. Because we're having so much fun and we're just in the moment. Like, Hell yeah, man. Great. You know. So, really. I mean, is this all too intelligent to be practical? I mean, I'm sure there's some people that are going to listen to this and go, Oh, oh, this sounds communist or utopian or, or wishful thinking or blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what, guys? If any of you want to think 2 plus 2 equals 1, cool. I respect your right, but, you know, don't expect me to align with you on that. You know, just not my thing, not my cup of tea. Not going there. Because I used to be there. God, I used to be there. Not so much anymore. It sucks there. So yeah, I'm not talking complacency, I'm not talking utopianism, I'm not talking communism. I mean, like I already said, there's still going to be assholes and douchebags and whatever. All the things that are realistic and reasonable to you right now. But you're just not going to have so much of it. And when you do experience it, it's going to be more easy going. It's going to be smooth entry into your reality, smooth exit out of your reality, and that your time of exposure is going to be quick and it's not going to bother you. As a matter of fact, you'll find it comical. You'll find it entertaining. Instead of posting messages on Facebook going, Oh, oh my God! You, oh, oh, I'm so mad! You won't believe what that motherfucker said to I me! Mean, oh my God! You'll be laughing your ass off instead. You'll just be laughing, just like, wow... I had a really awesome day today, and like, in the middle of the day, like, there was this guy who come up, and it's, oh my god, what he said was so funny, because it was so retarded, oh jeez, I am still laughing, and it's six hours later, you know. So, you see the difference between the two perspectives? That's, that's, that's two, that's two perspectives of one single event. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like Gandhi said, become, you gotta become the change you want to create. You gotta kind of be that elephant in the room, so to speak, by learning to live your life how you want to live it. And we are really discouraged from doing that because we've been taught that how we want to live it is wrong. Oh, oh no, you, uh, you, you're you stupid and, and, and you can't possibly know how to do anything because you don't have 16 degrees and, and 10 million dollars and... 40 years worth of experience and blah, 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 so, so, ha, huh, you, you, you living your life the way you want? Or, are you deluded? Do, 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 do you think life is a game or, 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 or a McDonald's drive through or something? L live it the way you want? Are you stupid? That's the reactions, like, we get from people and we're going to get from people. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's another thing about, um, going down this this particular type of path because it's it's a part of the demon facing process you know you're inevitably going to end up confronting those sorts of people because they're going to challenge you to to, to stick to your guns you know to uh, put your proverbial money where your mouth is to to have the proverbial balls to be able to say to them well you know what look 
I respect that you see life the way you see it, and so on and so forth, but you know what? No one died made you God. The freaking universe does not revolve around you, and, um, you know, if you want to think I'm a stupid, incapable jackass, well, that's fine. So we're just, we're just going to have to, like, agree to disagree there, because all of the successful entrepreneurs, all of the people that made something of themselves, you know, when they first started out, they only knew what they were going to do, what they wanted to do. They had no freaking clue how they gonna they were gonna do it. They just knew that they were gonna do it. And they were dedicated and they had intelligence, they had imagination, and they had creativity, and they knew how to freaking deal with people and they knew how to attract resources to them and so on and so forth. So yeah, they were some really bright motherfuckers. So yeah. They eventually it took them a while, but they eventually got to the point of where they wanted to be because they didn't give up. And they met up with resistance of armies of freaking fools just like you saying oh no 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 and you know they laughed at the freaking Wright brothers you know oh two farm boys gonna make a flying machine in their barn ha 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 what a bunch of idiots but who had the last laugh and now we got we got jet planes today don't we yeah we do so you know the only way to meet up against that type of resistance and prevail, prevail is to eliminate your resistance to it. In other words, your judgment. Because as long as we're on the topic of jet planes anyway, you know how jet planes fly? Resistance. Because that big ass jet in their ass is like putting out all this forward pressure. There's air in front of that plane. Air displacement. So the faster that that jet wants to push it forward, that jet engine, it's getting even more pressure coming in, in, in the nose of that plane, in the face of that plane. And that one pressure going one way and, and the pressure going the other way, that locks the jet to the ground. You can't fly under those physics. You need to make a change. So the change that's made is you've got the wing flaps that are able to move up and down. They can channel that energy, redirect it, make it go in a different direction. So now you've got all that resistance being channeled over it, behind it, and out its ass end, pushed at the ground, aimed at the ground, aimed down. So now with all that force going at the ground, the jet has to go up. Absolutely has to. And then, of course, the tail flaps are able to make it go left and right and all that. But yeah, I mean... When you enter, when you experience resistance in your life, it's just time to fly. That's all there is to it. You could remain on the ground if you want to, go nowhere, but it's just time to fly. And as you have experience after experience, the experience of life itself starts teaching you more about how all this quantum physics, metaphysics, whatever the fuck you want to call it, how it all works. Because, you know, these materialistic douchebags who treat, you know, the universe like a quantum version of the home shopping network. Oh, I'm visualizing my new car. They're not learning crap. So even when they can have enough focus to actually manifest a particular type of reality, they can never keep their manifestation. Because they don't understand the mechanics of how they got to that point in the first place. So they're always going to be slamming the brakes on the proverbial car for themselves. They're always going to be tripping themselves up and going, Man, why can't they ever do anything right? Because they're viewing it materialistically. Uh, they're not allowing for the experience. They're not enjoying the journey. It's about the journey, not the destination. They're not enjoying the journey. They're not paying attention to their surroundings. You know, they've got their, their nose in the corner of this idea of, Baby, when can you car? Baby, when can you car now? Or I'm going to cry. And, and maybe they've gotten, you know, good enough at, at their, their focus and their egocentric, egotistical, materialistic, you know, enjoyment of the idea of that car that maybe, just maybe, they align themselves with the circumstance to get it. 
but their worldview paradigms are still saying, oh, life sucks, and life's a bitch, and I never have enough money, and, and things suck, and, and everyone's out to get you, and blah, blah, and all that stuff just makes everything collapse. Because it's resistance. And it's, it's a pressure, it's, and it's an attachment, you know? They, are, they have their focus on that radio station of shit always happening. That Murphy's Law, that bad luck, whatever. So of course they're going to get that, despite anything quote-unquote positive that they might be able to achieve otherwise. You know, they're going to sabotage themselves. They're going to screw themselves over. They're going to fuck themselves in the ass. Because that's their core belief system. And that's a frequency they're aligning with. Oh, and you might want to look at the word coincidence. Coincidence is actually a coincidence. Mm. Things that coincide, that do relate to each other, absolutely do. They are connected in some way. We're just not always able to see the connection. Just like most of us aren't able to see the connection of how in the hell do they get a big freaking 10 ton metal tube with wings to fly up in the sky anyway. Well, now you're able to connect the, the physics because I very simply laid it out for you. But it's not a coincidence. It's not like, oh, well, jets just, <laughs> they work by coincidence. Yeah, it's just, wow, what a coincidence, man. No. It's a coincidence. <coughs> Aspects of frequency that are interconnected that coincide, that do work together, that are linked. Apps of friggin' movement. Oh, drinking some pop at the same time as I'm recording this. Pardon me on that. Yep, I'm also kind of tired, so I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out that I want to say, or I should end it soon, or what. But I'm going to figure that most of you probably get the basic idea. And there's some of you that probably left a long time ago. Ah, this guy's full of shit. Ah, screw him. I'm turning this off. I'm going to go go watch America's Top Model. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go whack off the porn. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> or, or whatever the hell it is they find more, um, you know, enjoyable than um, expanding their mind. And then of course there's gonna be those of you that are that are still here listening that are like, well, you know, it sounds kind of probable and this and that, whatever. But but you know, I I just can't really buy into that. It you know it because it sounds. It sounds too new agey, or it sounds this, or, 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 you know, uh, I believe that, um, that Jesus Christ is going to save my ass, so, so what you're talking about is satanic, you're, you're talking Satanism. Well, you know, Jesus said, all the works I have done, also shall you do in greater still. And, you know, even the people in Jesus' day, when he was doing all this stuff, thought he was, like, freaking, like, from Satan or something. And then he really pissed him off by saying... The same Father that is in me is also in you, is it not written in your law that ye are gods? I mean, Jesus taught metaphysics, quantum physics, and, you know, people back then were just as close-minded as, as they are these days. You've got the modern-day freaking Pharisees, organized religion, uh, corporate freaking brainwashing business. And why is it that... With all these religions, it's only acceptable if people were doing quote unquote miracles like two freaking thousand years ago. You know, as if, as if God could only put in the Holy Spirit in people two thousand freaking years ago. But, oh no, not now. You know, if it happens now, it must be Satan! Satan! You know, and it's like, you know, with all due respect, I, I I look at people like that and I'm thinking, whoa, fundamentalist freaking nut job, crazy. <laughs> I mean, I respect your right to be a fundamentalist crazy nut job, and you know, um, your right to think I'm like this evil, like Satanist scumbag, even though I'm also a Christian. Yeah, but yeah, I know you're gonna find somewhere to believe. 
But, you know, it's just, it's freaking paradigms, man. Because when you have somebody so hatefully fundamentalist and, and, and judging and blind and naive, well, guess what? They're not going to realize that they're being bad. And because they don't realize it, just like a small child doesn't realize a lot of things. I mean, you got to understand that people who are acting hateful, but they say they're not, they, they legitimately do not realize they're being hateful. Like, most of them do not realize it anyway. Most of them are in a state of genuine ignorance. They just, from their paradigm, they're not being hateful. They're just, they're, they're, they're coming up against what they feel is something that is attacking them or an evil in this world. And because they deem themselves to be on the side of good, it is their responsibility to fight that which is evil and, you know, whatever. Um, they, they don't realize that their hypocrisy goes against everything that Jesus ever said about anything. And that they are a perfect mirror for the Pharisees that Jesus described. And you know, every one of you that has that attitude, the uber-fundamentalist Christians, oh, I know I just pit, done pissed you off real good, and with all due respect, I'll quote David I can say, I don't give a shit, mate. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I really don't. I don't mean that in a negative context. I just mean that I respect your right to think what you think, and I respect my right to think what I think. It's all good. I mean, you know, I've, you know, I've talked about how, like, fundamentalist, radical, you know, frickin' Islamists, like, beat up on women and whatever. It's like, Oh, you're you're calling all Muslims terrorists and plants like it's hate mongering. It's like what? No, I'm not. I'm just saying that there are hateful radicals that like beat the frickin' crap out of women. Just like there are, you know, hateful Christian fundamentalists that do stuff. I mean, <clears throat> hateful fundamentalist Christians that have been in the KKK have actually taken blacks and gays and literally burned them to death on crosses, kind of like the <laughs> Puritans used to do to anyone they thought was a witch. Which, usually, it was just people who just figured out new ways to do things, like new inventions. If you take a flashlight back to them frickin' people, you think, I mean, if that was possible to time travel, it'd burn you as a witch for sure, hell yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's just, you know, frickin' ridiculous. I mean, you know, you could stick up for something about, like, you know, an injustice done to women and be called a feminazi. <laughs> or you can stick up for an injustice that, you know, like, you know, like, hey, well, that, that, that frickin' bitch did that to that guy. And, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're a male chauvinist pig and a woman hater. It's like, no matter what positive you say about one thing, there's, there's always gonna be somebody who's gonna interpret it as a negative, And then they're gonna be hate mongering on you and then call you the hate monger. They're going to be satanically attacking you and call you the demon. But let it be known, we have all, at some point or another, we have all been that same type of hypocrisy. And most of us have been it unknowingly. Because we didn't have the expanded perspective to really see our own hypocrisy. And some of us live our whole lives naive and, and die never knowing it. But those of us who are brave enough to face those demons and realize that, okay, value in all experience, it's just a learning experience that doesn't make me bad or stupid or evil or worthless or weak or whatever, that, that, that I had moments where I was a fucking hypocrite and I didn't realize that I was being bad and oh my god, now I realize it. Because ego doesn't want to face that. Ego wants to go, oh, if you've ever been a hypocrite, then you're weak. You're weak, and you're stupid, and you're this, and you're that, and shame on you, and you, you deserve to die and go to hell, and whatever. No. 
No, it's just it's just a learning experience. These days, I consider myself to be, you know, pretty, you know, spiritual, peaceful, mature, wise, um, intelligent, honest, etc., etc., whatever other good things you might want to say and have been said. But my God, I've been instinct ignorant, freaking stupid. I've been a, a hypocrite. I've been an asshole. I've been, you know, most, not all, but most of the bad baddities that you could freaking adjective off, um, you know, been there, done that, if there was a degree in fucking up, I'd be able to wallpaper my room with them, I mean, Jesus. So yeah, I'm by no means perfect. Nobody is. So these are all just learning experiences, and we can keep heading in the direction of always fucking up if that's the most real reality for us, or we can be open-minded to thinking, well, you know what, the universe doesn't revolve around us, and we don't fucking know it all, and no one died and made us freaking God, so, you know, maybe I should be open-minded to other perspectives, and ex expand my horizons, and have a little more faith in my ability to understand, and, and, and know that it doesn't have to be this big, nasty, hard struggle, and that, that it's okay to go at my own pace, and God only knows I might just learn something. I might just make my life easier. I might just start to be more happy. And maybe I deserve to be more happy. Despite how big of a bastard maybe I think I was in the past or am now or whatever, maybe I still deserve it anyway. That I deserve the happiness and, and success and all that because, you know, nobody's perfect. And the only reason I might ever have been any of those negative things is because I just didn't know any better. Just like a little baby doesn't know any better when they're crapping their frickin' pants and peeing their diapers and, you know, it's like, when we were babies, it, it's not, we're, we didn't do anything criminal to our mothers because they had to change the diapers, you know? Sh should we feel horrible? Oh my god, I committed such an unforgivable sin against my mother. When I was a baby, she had to change my diapers. Oh, how horrible of me. No, of course not. As babies, we didn't know any better. We didn't know how to use the freaking toilet. Didn't even know how to walk yet. <laughs> you know, so it's all the same thing. If we can just stop giving ourselves a hard freaking time and open our minds and just learn, you know, and, and, and enjoy the journey. It's not about the, indes the destination. Enjoy the journey and, and enjoy the adventure. Enjoy the value and the experience, the opportunity that, you know, I'm not saying have a complacent, blind, naive view of life. I'm just saying, you know, when shit happens, plant a garden. It's all fertilizer. You know, benefit from all experience. Because it's all just knowledge. It's all just information. It's all just frequency. And this physical reality ain't physical anyway. And you could do a little more scientific research on that if you want. If you're interested. And, um... On that note, I guess I should probably end this off with some sort of inspiring quote or, or or some freaking thing. Um, I guess I could just use the, um, the quote that is um, in my deviant art signature um, by this uh, dude called uh, Bashar. Cool guy. Funny as hell. Um, let's see if my web browser wants to cooperate with me here. Because I, I don't want to try to rattle it off from memory. I'm getting a little tired here. So I just want to kind of read it in front of me so it's easier that way. If my web browser will just... Ah, there we go. The more actively involved people become in the helping to teach empowerment to those who have been taught disempowerment, the greater, faster, and more profound your impact upon the planet will be. And on that note, 
in La Cash, motherfuckers. Namaste. Shalom. Peace be with you. Have a really awesome day, and you know how, however, um, you want to say, kick ass and chew bubble gum, and we're all out of gum, and have a great, awesome, wonderful, frickin' day, morning, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I hope I've helped clear some shit up for you. Um, this has probably left you with a lot more. Um, questions and answers, but that's what it's supposed to do. Like the uh, holographic doctor on the movie iRobot said. If you want the answers, you have to ask the right questions. So, gotta get those questions first. So that's always the first most important start of it. Otherwise, it's kind of like asking the marital status at the number five or you know, political orientation of a tuna fish sandwich. So, yeah. Kind of moving out of the ridiculousness and the dysfunction and into the uh, clarity. Oh, you might also want to um, check for a video on YouTube called um, Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Um, I've got that on oh at least a couple of my on my YouTube profiles. I know I've got it on Paradigm Shift Docs for you, obviously. Um, it's it's in the playlist there somewhere. But yeah, Plato's Allegory of the Cave does a, a real, real uh, good job of outlining this sort of stuff. And there's another one you could use here, YouTube search for called uh, The Matrix in the Cave. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully that helps. And um, catch y'all later.